Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you an individual stock pick in Delta Airlines Incorporated, symbol DAL. I did record this video on Monday, April 18th, 2022. All the charts I'll be showing you are weekly bar charts as usual. Uh, we've got the fundamentals here, basic fundamentals, courtesy of Yahoo Finance. You can have a look and see that at that. If you want to scroll back, you can freeze over it and study it if you like. I'm going to jump right into the chart, though. And this is really a weekly chart going back uh, to uh, the origin of the stock, DAL. Uh, back, it looks right around 2008, might be late 07. And this is the full uh, uh, extent of it. And uh, we're going to zoom in actually a little bit because there's some things going on here. I want to show you a buy signal that may reveal itself here over the next week, two or three. Um, and that is nothing more than a descending two-thirds speed line. Now, I know this looks like a trend line across those tops, and it's not. It's a speed line. And so, uh, you know, I didn't take the time to show you the exact construction of the speed line. If you've been following wickedstocks.com, uh, my analysis and across a spectrum of different uh, stocks and ETFs, I do throw the uh, one and two thirds speed line at you once in a while. And I can describe it actually here. You have the high of 52.28 from March of 2021 against the more recent low uh, last March of 29.75. And if you were to follow the two thirds retracement to the upside, which is beyond the five eights, of course, that'd be 0.666, you're drawing a trend line from the 52.28 high across. Uh, to the point where you have the five eights, I'm sorry, the six six six, two thirds retracement level in the time frame in which the low was made, and so uh, that descends over time. It is trend defining. It's at forty three eighty six this week. So the way I see it, this is our ceiling really through the second quarter. So Delta can uh, grow tired here, overbought, and fall off in the weeks ahead. Forty three eighty six, a meaningful ceiling through Q2, puts us in the mid-year, and a significant upside pivot point into later year. Uh, you can see here that, um, I'm just showing this really just so you can see that we closed above the descending one-third speed line about a month and a half ago, uh, and that's constructed the same way, but using 0.33 instead of 0.66. So the, the rule with speed line analysis is if you close above the descending one-third speed line, the descending two-third speed line becomes your next target. And that was a nice trade. We were not following this closely at the time. But you can see that a month and a half ago, we closed above the descending one-third speed line, indicating the descending two-third speed line as an objective. The descending one-third speed line is presently at 3548. And one of the reasons I'm also showing it is because I think this market holding below 4386 or once testing 4386 can quite easily fall back to 3548 over the following two to three, three to five weeks. It's dropping on a weekly basis. And... Um, you know, you can see how it's dropping 29 cents a week. The 4386 two-thirds speed line is dropping 14 cents a week. So you can monitor these speed lines through May if you like. But once again, holding below 4386 does allow this market to fall back over the next three to five weeks or less to that 35, 38, one-third speed line, which over the next three to five weeks will line up well with the high of the low at 34.20. So that area is good support if tested. And it is in reach once again, I'm going to say by the end of May, holding below 43.86, we can fall back into the mid 30s again, uh, you know, over the next three to five weeks. That's about a 20% break from where we are, maybe a little bit more. So that's sort of the basic three to five week snapshot. But the real reason I'm showing is the potential for longer term bullish continuation if we were to settle above 43.86. So closing the week above 43.86, and I need to see that by a 1% margin, and that would be 44.30 uh, or higher at the end of this week, that would be Friday April 22nd, if we close at 44.30 or higher in Delta, then we have a nice buy signal. And we're also showing a descending channel top that is also in the 43 handle this week. So, you know, if you want to take a stab, if you will, you know, it depends on how you trade. If you're long Delta and you're long Delta only over the near to midterm time horizons, you should pay attention to these levels because this could be about it to the upside as we move into the third quarter and we could fall back, as I say, 
say into the mid 30s uh, over the next month or two. Uh, 4301 up to 4386 is a range of resistance that can contain buying through the second quarter. And from here, Delta can grow tired and fall back into the 35 handle or lower over the next couple of months. And so, you know, for those of you who trade options, for instance, and you're not in a trade right now, this is a zone where you could consider buying, say, 35 strike puts that don't expire for at least two or three months. Uh, so that you're not subject to time decay uh, over that time horizon as Delta then presumably falls back into the mid-30s uh, mid over the next couple of months. Uh, and inversely, if we do close the week, as I say, 44.30 or higher on Friday, April 22nd, which is a 1% push through 43.86, I really need that 1% for buy signal clarity, as I like to call it. Then we, um, we enter a new phase of buying that should yield this rising channel top, I would give this about three to five months or less. So 43.86 up to 59.62, that would be the trade if we close by beyond that by 1% of 44.30 or higher. And I'm going to say three to five months realistically. 59.62, that's a nice trade. That's about, um, well, as time goes by and that channel top rises into the lower 60s, you know, it's really close to a 50% trade um, over the next three to five months. I think you can sort of, you know, uh, conservatively call it a 40% play. On the way up, of course, you'll have that last February high, uh, not last February, but the February um, 20, well, it was a February 21 high. That was actually mislabeled. Uh, my regrets, but the February 21 high was 52.28. So that alone is a decent 20% play to the upside. Uh, and then over time, I think you're looking at a 40 to 50% play to the upside. Now, of course, the low 60s would be a longer term target. So it's well suited for those of you who like to trade sort of the near to midterm investment uh, uh, time horizon, you know, not long term, you're not buying Delta for years to come, you're buying Delta for the next couple of quarters. If we close Friday, April 22nd, above that 4386 speed line by the 1% margin, which once again is 4430 or higher. Until then, Delta can fall back into the mid 30s, as I've shown over the next couple of months, where I think it could actually be bought on a uh, monthly basis anyway. Um, I think that that kind of rounds it out. Here's sort of the big picture where all that is shown. Um, I think that kind of rounds it out. I'm trying to think if there's anything uh, that I've not said. And no, I think, I think I've said everything. So that's really all we've got for this particular. Um, uh, this is actually a free stock pick we're putting on YouTube. And so... Uh, uh, I should mention, of course, that I would encourage you to go to wickedstocks.com and become a premium member because premium members get two more of these every week, these stock picks. And that's for $25 a month. You get two more stock picks like these. You also get the weekly Dow Jones Industrial ETF, the DIA, the weekly IWM, the Russell 2000, and the weekly Bitcoin report and two stock picks. You get that all for $25 a month. So keep that in mind. Go to wickedstocks.com and become a premium member today. That's all I've got for this uh, particular stock pick. You have a great day.